Today, my guest is Bruce Mack. Bruce is a licensed financial advisor. Uh, he's with uh, Platinum Financing Group. And uh, today we're going to speak with him about their proprietary, irrevocable spendthrift trust. Uh, but first, quick reminder, if you like the show, our show, Commercial Real Estate Pro Network, CREPN Radio, we would love to hear from you. You can like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we'd love to uh, hear your comments uh, as to uh, what you like about it. And also, I want to remind you, if you'd like to see how handsome our guests are, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. That's Commercial Real Estate Pro Network. All right. Now it's time to welcome my guest from Aspen, Colorado, and interrupt his skiing. Bruce, how are you doing? Welcome to CREPN Radio. Well, I have to tell you, Darren, I'm doing fantastic because I was out there at the crack of dawn today, and I got on the hill. I laid some fresh tracks. There was there was about four inches of uh, of powder, and instead of going to the gym uh, in the morning. I find this to be just such a better alternative to be able to get the exercise and have some fun. No, oh, I, I would, uh, it's hard to argue that you're doing it wrong. I'd say you're doing it right there, my friend. So, well, Bruce, uh, before we get going here a little bit, if you could take a minute and share a little bit about your background and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm a, a licensed financial advisor and I've been in the financing world for uh, multiple decades. Uh, we work uh, funding new business startups and existing businesses. And within that vertical, we really specialize and almost exclusively work with real estate investors around the country. Uh, and this can be anything from um, gap funds that are needed to close a deal to transactional financing for wholesalers who want to do wholesale flips from A to B and B to C transactions. Uh, we also do hard money loans. And so we run the full gauntlet of services being able to uh, finance uh, investors. And, and out of that, and out of my 20 plus uh, year track uh, uh, record uh, as an advisor, I've really been a student of trusts. Um, uh, you start off with the most basic trust, that's a living trust, which many of us have, uh, which gives us zero asset protection, no tax advantages, but is good for probate avoidance. And it's also uh, good for wealth transference, because what we're doing is we're saying, uh, our son's going to get this, our daughter's going to get that, so on and so forth. So uh, it does have value. But I was always on a quest, and the quest was for the holy grail of trusts to find a trust environment that had additional components to it that made it more salient. And the components that I was looking for and hoping to achieve in, in my quest for trusts were A, having the ability to have asset protection that's bulletproof, uh, that that quite simply is impenetrable. And then secondarily, uh, the idea or notion that the trust vehicle could also have tax advantages, especially for real estate investors. Uh, very happy to say I partnered up with a law firm that has a specialized copywritten, so they own copyrights, uh, various multiple copyrights, and they have had a trust that meets every piece that we're talking about um, with, that has been out and in existence since 1999. There's over 30,000 of, of these trusts out there, and we can take a little deeper dive, but I'm excited to share with uh, your viewers and listeners about the com uh, components of what this trust is all about because it's absolutely a phenomenal opportunity. And I truly believe, as being a fellow investor, somebody who uh, I bought, rehabbed, and flipped over 160 properties in a three-year period of time, and I've personally been involved in over $92 million worth of real estate transactions. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm one of you guys. I'm an, an, a fellow investor, and I just would not 
not have one of these trusts now that I know that it exists and the capabilities uh, that it provides for us. All right. Now, I, 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 the, uh, the things you mentioned here, the asset protection and the tax advantages, uh, I definitely want to get into that. But I want to back up a second here because it sounds like uh, in, the, in the, the beginning there, there was uh, a mention of that you guys work a lot with like financing real estate uh, and stuff, which would be, be more on the lending side. Yes. As opposed to, I've always thought of, I guess, a, or a trust as being some way to protect your assets from creditors or from, uh, or like you, an, an ability to uh, transfer your your assets to the next generation or your heirs or whatever. So can, I, you, can you back up and just kind of walk us through that? Because I want to make sure I understand completely what we're, what yes, we're talking about. Yes, and I apologize. I was giving a short, when I was giving the short backgrounder, uh, I, I, I really want folks to know where I come from, what I do. Mm -hmm. And I really, we have two different uh, entities uh, that function in, in, in a dual track, if you will. One of them is Platinum, uh, Platinum Financing Group, which is our funding company, uh, which, where we work with a lot of real estate investors and other business startups and existing businesses, helping them with funds procurement. And that's a separate uh, LLC, if you will. And then our other division is Platinum Trust Group, which is the uh, entity that focuses on uh, getting trusts for clients, regardless of the industry uh, that they're in, for both asset protection and potentially for tax mitigation. Got it. Got it. Appreciate you uh, distinguishing there. Um, so let's let's go through, if you will, uh, kind of the different elements of trust and what what you know what they can do. Can you, uh, you mentioned uh, the the two things that we, we've we talked about asset protection uh, and, and tax advantages. Uh, and you also mentioned like a living trust. Basically what you're doing there is um, avoiding probate. Is that the, is that really the goal of living trust? Yes. When I, when I first started on the quest for the Holy grail to really take a deeper dive into what trusts are all about, uh, the most rudimentary or base level trust uh, and many uh, people are, are, are familiar with them because they've got one uh, where they have medical directives and powers of attorney uh, and, they, and they, they've got a, a living trust which incorporates those pieces. But the main reasons for a living trust are one, for probate avoidance and two, for wealth transference, meaning to direct where our assets are going to go after we go uh, to the to to the to to up, up to wherever we go to or wherever we go to, um, and those are great, but they're very rudimentary, and that's not at all. And sometimes people get confused because they say, "Well, trust, I've got a trust, and that's great. You may have a living trust, and we take living trusts and we incorporate the wishes of the living trust into our irrevocable spendthrift." Uh, proprietary copy written trust, but this trust is much more complex, much more diverse, and has much, much more to offer uh, to real estate investors and or other business owners. And the first and key principle is the notion of having a bulletproof or what we call titanium vault, if you will, asset protection. Um, now, I'm a firm believer in insurance. I'm a firm believer in getting an umbrella and, and, and getting D&O and E&O and so on and so forth. But uh, um, that the, the awards that I have seen, unfortunately, uh, transcend what insurance can protect. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, I have a client and they lost 20 houses because there was an exclusion in their policy for uh, the kid, the, the son, who actually hit a kid who was driving an ATV. Oh, Go figure. Yeah. So therefore, they were SOL, and they lost 20 houses. 
uh, another scenario, uh, I have a client that lost 150 houses and two apartment buildings due to a uh, wrongful eviction. Now, these things happen. And, oh. I see, and people think unwittingly, well, they've taken some real estate courses from one of the gurus that are out there. Uh, and and they, they get taught, well, the best way to be insular against any type of, a, of a asset protection attack is to have one LLC for each property. And that's not a bad way to go for basic asset protection. However, one of the easiest ways to pierce the corporate veil is to use what's called the alter ego or et al um, it, it, offense as a prosecutor. Uh, and that is to say that the person's masquerading and hiding behind their corporate veil and it's really them. Now, this is an easy argument to make when you're speaking about one person owning an LLC, a C or an S, or maybe two or three, uh, because it's the individual, it's the individual and their wife, it's the individual and a partner. And that's the usual case with most real estate investors is they are what we consider to be tightly held entities. And therefore that argument does cut mustard. So sometimes what we do to help mitigate and offset cost is we'll throw a couple of properties into an LLC. But again, one LLC gets pierced, all properties could get seized. And, see, and piercing that the, the corporate veil is not that difficult. And it gets costly. And the, and the way that it gets costly, well, let's just say you're in California, uh, each LLC, which is usually the modality that most of uh, the investors that we work with, they're using these days as opposed to a C or an S because of the potential double taxation and so on and so forth. With an LLC, the usual franchise tax board fees can be quite high. In California, they start at $800 a year. But let's look past that. There's also the... Uh, obligation to keep up the corporate responsibilities in the corporate and if you don't and that's another easy way to have your corporate veil be pierced if you don't have your uh, meetings on a continual basis and you don't you don't keep your proper notes and you don't have the right documentation and you get yanked into court pierced veil the third issue is gosh darn it to file uh, and to do a tax return for an LLC, the average or norm is $1,500 a year. So one LLC prorating out times 10 years, uh, that's $15,000 that you can't get away from. Gosh darn it, you have 10 properties, that's, that gets to be some serious dollars that can be avoided with having a trust. Got it, got it. So... I understand basically the, the, the concept, if you will, uh, in that the, 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 you're essentially, you're, you're, um, or you laid out the, the potential to pierce the veil of the entity, yes. uh, the LLC or the, the corporation. Um, can you distinguish for us how the trust overcomes that? I mean, what, what does the trust give you that the entity doesn't? Uh, and I mean, we've talked about insurance too, and I understand, you know, if you, if there's an exclusion on a policy or if you don't have enough limits or whatever, then they're going to look for whatever else you have. So can you distinguish for us what the trust does, uh, to create that separation or protection? Yes. Um, the trust, first of all, separates the individual from the assets because we, literally transfer all of our assets into the trust. And like Rockefeller uh, has said, the beauty, you know, the, the nirvana is to be able to own nothing but control everything. So therefore, if there was a lawsuit or there is a lawsuit, uh, call it what you will, there is no state governmental agency and or uh, there is no way that that the, excuse me, the trust veil 
can be pierced. It's absolutely bulletproof and exempt from any uh, uh, marching orders or uh, charging orders, as they're called, in the event that there's a loss of a suit. So not only does this mean that you are completely insular against any loss, but it also that there's a secondary component there that the client, if they were to get involved into a lawsuit, the average lawsuit, commercial lawsuit, is 72,500. I can assure you that if a, an imposing attorney knows that there's a spendthrift, irrevocable type of trust like we've got, we've seen it all too many times where they pack up their bags and leave because they know that there's no pot of gold at the end of the litigation rainbow. So we, we, it's a double win for our clients. And, and that's based on what I'm hearing you saying is that the, the trust, they are exempt from charging uh, orders. So, yes. I mean, so they're completely <clears throat> exempt from a charging order. I can't, I, I would never say that the client can't get sued. Anybody could sue anybody for anything. Sure. But there's a complete uncollectability uh, that goes into the equation. There, there's no way that that can be pierced. There's only one possibility for overturning and getting and piercing a trust veil. And that's real simple. It's called fraudulent conveyance. So what's fraudulent conveyance? That's if in the event that somebody had already gotten noticed, i.e. they had been sued, right? And they're in the middle now of, 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 of the issue and they fraudulently tried to convey their assets into a trust so that they would be able to protect them. And it becomes known that could obviously blow up uh, their, their plan. We, we never ascribe to that. We, are, we never want to be a right. part of any of those types of transactions, but that's the, have a problem with a trust, which is why I always tell people, you always want to do your front end triage as opposed to your back end triage and try and save your, to save your bacon. Yeah. No, I, that's the same with uh, insurance. You, you can't buy the, the policy after the claim or, you know, after you're dead, you can't buy the life insurance. And I'm a um, firm believer in insurance, the umbrellas, the E and O and the D and O, and this is transcending to the next level. Oh, sure. No, I, I wasn't trying to impart uh, as you were or weren't as much as just that, that, you know, the, you, you can't go back after the fact and try and rearrange, you know, what you have to avoid uh, what was exposed or, or to protect what was exposed. So that's, I get that. Um, so I, I wrote down here, so we, we talked about asset protection and I feel like you, you've laid that out. Can you talk about the tax advantages? What are the tax advantages um, that the, the trust provide? They're extremely exciting tax advantages, especially for real estate investors. So let me start and tell you where we cannot help somebody from a tax advantage standpoint. And that would be if somebody's a W-2 employee. And there's certainly some real estate investors who do hold a day job and they also are real estate investors. So can't help on the W-2. However, the ordinary income, the lease uh, income and or rental income is ordinary income. The long-term and or short-term capital gains that most uh, real estate investors get whacked with, this is all completely deferrable and it's deferrable generationally. So if we're normally subju uh, subjugated to a, well, let's just say a hundred thousand dollar liability with our trust in the way it was written in the proprietary copywritten format, the trust corpus does not distribute until 21 years after the last of the beneficiaries and the beneficiaries heirs decease. Now this is the most beautiful statement because it literally kicks the tax can down the road 50, 100, 200 
years from now. And nobody that we know or we're connected with is going to have the fiduciary responsibility to the corpus as it, when it distributes. This is huge. And our, and, and our investors are, are absolutely over the top when they hear this because in our world, this means now there's no need for a 1031 exchange. And the unfortunate reality with 1031 exchanges is they're, I call them the teat because once you get on them, you can't get off of them. And they're a little tainted because most times when people get involved with the 1031 exchange, it's because it meets the criteria. It is not the subject property that they would want to invest in if they didn't have to pick up the 1031 because they were on a timeline and they were on that treadmill trying to get everything done within the confines and the timelines to be able to execute and be able to have that exchange uh, actually work for them. Okay. I want to ask you on, on, on the 1031 uh, comparison. So mm -hmm. on, a, on a 1031, my understanding is if you uh, sell a property, you have First of all, you can't lay hands on the proceeds. You've got to go through a, a um, administrator. A, administ the, yeah, the intermediary. In, uh, exactly. Right. And you have 45 days to identify the replacement property, total Fine. of 100, 180 days from from the sale to close the, the property. Is that my tracking? It, you know what? I mean, it, for I, discussion I, it, purposes. It, it, 90 or 100 or 180 days total from the total time total time and it's it, yes the answer is yes and yes okay and then from that uh the, the benefit is you can take whatever gains and uh recapture dis depreciation and move that to the new property is i mean from the old property to the new property and so you essentially reset the clock and you don't have to there's no tax from that sale due because you've just transferred it to another property Right. That's correct. Okay. So walk me through how it works in, in, in the um, uh, irrevocable uh, spendthrift trust model. Okay. The problem, with it, let me first of all back up and say the problem with the 1031 exchange is first of all, you have no way to access those funds and you perennially have to keep in a 1031 exchange or you get hit with this monstrous tax bill. Uh, in our scenario, you sell a property and then the funds go to corpus. Yes, if you take out monies for what I call the three S, the three Fs, food, fun, and fashion, yes, that is going to become taxable. However, because there's such a larger gateway within within the trust allocations that you can you can utilize the monies for. For instance, um, what if I were to tell you that 100% of your, of your residence, because your residence is gonna go into the trust, it's gonna be uh, part of, it's going to be uh, part of uh, the beneficial interest given to your wife or, or what have you, or, uh, and, and therefore you're living in the house. Now I'm gonna tell you that 100% of the expenses to the house are deductible, which is unheard of. That's completely uh, the inverse to conventional thinking where we could only take a very small portion right up. What if I were to tell you 100% of your medical expenses? What if I were to tell you that if you've got kids, as so many people do, and uh, you want to help them with their education, maybe a car, the trust now can buy the car and let Johnny or Jill use the car. It's a trust asset, but who cares? The, the point is we're going back to that concept of, I own nothing, control everything. It's a trust asset. And let's talk about going back to the college at, uh, uh, scenario and paying for education. Let's say there's a 20, $30,000 tuition. Well, we educate our client that they don't pay that tuition by giving that money to Johnny or Jill and saying, now you go down and uh, pay for your uh, education at the, uh, uh, at, the, at the admissions office. 
rather, because that would become a distributable expense, a taxable event, rather we pay for the college tuition by paying the admissions office directly. And by paying the admissions office directly, it becomes a trust expense and so on and so forth. Okay. So back up here one second here. I just want to make sure I'm, sure. I'm tracking you. <clears throat> so the funds go in the trust. So I, I, I have a property. I sell the property. I assume I have to put the property in the trust before I sell it so that the proceeds stay in the trust. Is yes. That- Okay. And this, n- n- now we're getting deep in the woods, but that I, I'm, no, I'm I just, just, just to walk through this. So I make sure I'm, I'm, I'm great yeah. with that because okay. the next question that are, so many of the people that are listening are going to have on, on this. And I'm, sh- and, and I'm sure you too, Darren is okay. Now I need to go down to uh, the uh, County clerk recorder's office and I need to do tra- I need to transfer the property into the trust. And when I do that, then if I took the property subject to, I'm going to be blowing that prop that, that up and, or I'm going to be chatteled if nothing else with the uh, transfer tax of moving the property from A to B. No, what we ascribe to is another strategy, which is creating uh, a quick claim deed, which is kept with the trust documents in there only in the event that there is a, uh, a suitor. Uh, and I'm not talking about somebody who's coming, <laughs> going to a ball, uh, an evening ball. I'm talking about somebody giving you service. So therefore it goes in to the corpus, but it is a private transaction, if you will. And this is one of the things that we uh, educate our uh, trust clients about. All right. So basically, though, all of these transactions we're talking about, the food fun and I remember what the other uh, F was. Food uh, fun and fashion. Fashion. There we go. Okay. Um, basically, th- these are transactions between the trust and whatever service it is, as opposed to distributing to uh, the individual and then the individual uh, being or paying for the services, correct? I mean, is that, I mean, well, that... I, I want to differentiate here. When, when the trust gets set up, one of the things that's done is the transfer or the selling of all assets uh, and properties and so on and so forth to the trust, which is how you become completely insular uh, and cannot have a, 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 a charging order executed. Then the question becomes, we talked about food, fun, and fashion. Those are three necessities or to whatever extent uh, that the individual or individuals that are in the family will, will be getting uh, their, food, their food, fun, and fashion. And that will become uh, monies that comes out of the trust and those monies which is the only monies that you that are really relevant? Those monies would be taxed. Will be ta- would be taxable. The rest, we are saving, and I, and I should have probably mentioned this. Uh, most of our real estate investors are seeing a seventy to ninety plus percent reduction in their uh, in their taxes. Again, the only thing that they're taxed on is the food, the fun, and the fashion, because everything else stays in corpus. And yes, you can use corpus to make acquisitions, i.e. buy properties, and do and do anything that uh, you would normally want to do. Got it. Yeah, and I apologize, because I did have written down uh, taxable on the, the three Fs there, so I, I tangled that uh, up. I appreciate, appreciate you straightening that out. Um, so you mentioned the, uh, you, you can acquire properties. Um, how, how does it work when you're, uh, if you're acquiring a property uh, and you're getting a loan, is there a, is there a, uh, uh, an issue there where you take, uh, I mean, are, is the new property held in the trust or, I mean, I'm assuming that's the case because we, we've tried to own nothing and, and control everything, right? That's the, the, the answer is when we close on the property, likely it will be closed uh, in, the, in the client's name uh, and then immediately transferred to a trust. There are some lending institutions that love trust. There are some lending institutions that are not trust friendly. So either way, it makes no difference. Gotcha. Gotcha. But that's something you guys have worked through. That's not a, the, okay. Gotcha. 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 
Uh, well, that's, that's a lot to chew on there. I, I, um, I mean, I, I, I've obviously I've heard of trust and I, I know, you know, my mother has one and in-laws have one and, and, uh, I've certainly, you know, been considering it and, and, uh, you know, it, it's clearly something that's not new. Uh, but just, I guess the, the advantages of it are something that, uh, are not, uh, always so clear. So describe for me, who, who's the ideal, uh, you know, real estate investor or somebody that, that would be a, a prime candidate for a, an irrevocable uh, spendthrift trust? Our prime candidate is, first of all, uh, the, the absolute perfect prime candidate is anybody who's looking to be selling an asset this year. Because let's face it, if they're selling an asset and there's any equity in it, uh, whether it's a business asset or it's a, a, it's a SFR, single family residence or a multifamily, then they're looking at long or short term capital gains and getting pretty well smacked around and we can help. So that's if somebody said, who's at the top of the food chain that we need to speak to yesterday, it would be them. Because, because again, we can't unring that bell, but we can help on the front end if there's going to be a sale that's going to be coming up. Secondly, from a tax perspective. Secondly, any real estate investor who long range is looking to be buying and selling properties and or business owner that's looking to, uh, uh, that, that, that has ordinary income. These are all people that if they've got a $10,000, $20,000 a year uh, taxable event that's pretty much perennial, um, it, it's a no brainer that they want to get with us. And that's just from the tax perspective, uh, the tax advantage piece. The other piece, which is really to me the primary focus and where we really need to, to, be, to be keeping our eyes uh, fixed is on the asset protection piece because we both, you know, I, I'm no kid. Uh, and I've worked my ass off. And the last thing that I need is to have some dumb lawsuit that completely wipes me out. I mean, I've seen the uh, $6.7 million dog bite, uh, a $47 a $7 million a car accident award. Heck, we've all seen the two point, or most, most of us are aware that crazy McDonald's lawsuit with the lady who got scalded with a hot coffee was 2.7 or $2.9 million. You'd never know when you're going to hit a bingo, your numbers up and you could potentially be wiped out for everything that you've worked so hard for. Yeah, no, that, that's a, that's clearly a point to not to run past, uh, the asset protection part of that. Um, Bruce, for a, uh, you know, somebody that's looking to, to get into this, um, is there something that I'm, we've missed here or, or would the best thing to do have them get in touch with you or, or how, you know, is there something that we should have, that we should have talked about that we didn't? Can you help me out here? No, we have really covered, I, I think we've really covered a lot of ground for more information. We've set up uh, a special link for uh, your your uh, listeners and viewers, which is platinumtrustgroup.com forward slash C-R-E-P-N. So that's, again, platinumtrustgroup.com forward slash C-R-E-P-N. There's a an interview that was done there's some slides, so it goes into a little more depth. It's it's not too long. It's about another 10, 15 minutes. And and there's an opportunity, should uh, uh, the, the uh, listener or viewer uh, wish, to go, uh, wish to get more information, for them to get a complimentary consultation and a link out to that so that we can sit with them over the, uh, over the phone and, and uh, uh, talk about their specifics, see what's going on in their world, and see how we can be of benefit uh, potentially uh, to them and for them. Awesome. Okay, before we wrap up, uh, as I shared with you uh, before we started recording, uh, new this year, I've been asking all of my guests to uh, give us their biggest risk. 
and uh, kind of uh, uh, what they do to management. And this basically came from, uh, as I told you, I'm an insurance broker and, and uh, in insurance, we look at risk we, we, and how to manage it. And there's basically the three, three uh, management philosophies. One is avoid it, two is minimize it, and three is transfer it, where the, the um, you know, insurance comes into play a lot of times. So if I were to ask you, what do you see as the biggest risk uh, that you face or your, your clients face? I'll tell you, I, uh, the, to me, the biggest risk that, that I face and my clients face is the fact that they could have uh, issues and get wiped out from their assets by not being uh, protected in a fashion that they need to be. And what I've done to mitigate and offset risk is I... I'm one of those firm believers that if I'm going to promote something, be involved with it, uh, I need to be a student of it and, and have it myself. So I and my wife, we both have uh, a trust and I feel that that gives me the peace of mind when I go to sleep in the evening that uh, I, I know that we have done everything that we possibly can to be insular against uh, charging orders. And likewise, we do our darndest when we encounter uh, clients or potential clients when we're doing consulting uh, to have them get on the same wavelength and understand how we can, how we can protect them uh, and their future as well. Awesome. Now, I appreciate uh, your, your insight and your, your, your thought in that because uh, I think that there's a... Uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, clearly in insurance, we talk and you know, people think about protection and insurance, and clearly is it, it is a layer of protection. But uh, as you've identified, there uh, those policies have some exclusions, and and you uh, might have you know some that uh, kind of prevent you from uh, collecting as you might have thought. And uh, by going that extra layer with the asset protection with the trust and that you've. Uh, you can clearly do a, a complete job there. So that's, I appreciate that. Bruce? They, I think they live well together. I'm certainly not saying insur you don't need insurance. I'm a firm believer in insurance and umbrella policies, D and O and E and O. It's the total, umbrella, the, 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 the total package to give the complete protection for that person and for, for their business. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yeah, no, no, I, I think we're in the singing the same song there. I like it. Hey, Bruce, uh, you, you mentioned, and I appreciate this, the uh, platinumtrustgroup.com forward slash CREPN. Mm -hmm. And that's where, and what was it, uh, a free consultation? Or what was the... What when was they the, go to that link, that, that will invoke a, a video, which okay. will give more information. And on that link, there's also a clickable uh, there's information that so that they can they can uh, get a, a complimentary consultation, which will put them into one on one with me. Got it. And is there should I put uh, that as the primary way to uh, get in touch with you? Uh, connect. I'd like to. It's really the, it's really the best uh, okay. the, the best way. I would direct everybody there because it's so easy uh, for everybody. Um, you can also jump on to platinumtrustgroup.com uh, as and there's also a, a, a contact us page there as well and additional information. Got it. Bruce, I want to say thank you again for uh, taking a break from your, your skiing and uh, sharing and, and teaching us about trust and, and especially the irrevocable trust uh, and the benefits of them. Uh, I've learned a lot and uh, hope we can do it again soon. I can't thank you enough and it's been wonderful. And thank, thank you so much for uh, giving me the time so that I could share what, uh, what we have with your, with your clients. You got it. For our listeners, if you like this episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Remember, the more you know, the more you grow. That's all we've got this week. Until next time, thanks for listening to Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio.